Hey what's up everyone, it's Steph from Steph Lee Film. So how long has it been since the A10 Mini Pro was released by Blackmagic Design? It was released in July 2020 and so now it's been about 4 months and of course, in between there was the release of the ISO model as well. So up to now, two major issues still not fixed yet by Blackmagic Design. One of which is the HDMI output with no option to show both multi-view and program mode. And of course, in my opinion, the number one problem that they should fix right away. The ability or should I say the inability to record using the USB-C port once it is taken up by using the A10 mini as a webcam function. So when do we use it as a webcam function? Most commonly in Zoom or Microsoft Teams meetings. So in today's video, I will show you how you can record your Zoom meetings in OBS even if the USB-C port is taken up because you are using the A10 Mini Pro or ISO as a webcam. So without further ado, let's dive right in. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software and it is a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. First of all, you need to download the OBS Studio software. So go to obsproject.com and select your operating system. Since I use the Mac, I choose Mac OS. Once you've downloaded and installed the app, open the app and you will see an interface like this. For first time users of the OBS software, don't get too overwhelmed, relax. OBS has so many functions and capabilities, but for today's video, we will just focus on how to record your Zoom meetings. The first thing you will notice are the menus down at the bottom, scenes, sources, audio mixer, scene transitions, and controls. Okay, so scenes is something like a building block for you to build your stream on, and sources are what you put in these individual scenes to support it. Audio mixer is where your audio is and since we are not using OBS to do streaming, we can avoid this section called transitions for now. And lastly, the options under controls is pretty straightforward. The first thing I want you to do is to go to your settings under controls here. For today's video, we will focus on the three settings here, output, audio and video because for the rest of the settings, we can leave it for now. Under output, recording here, key in your recording path. This is where all your recorded videos will be stored in at your computer after you are done recording. For me, I usually leave it on my desktop, so I will select that as my path. Under recording quality, you can select a few choices. I would suggest same as stream or higher quality medium file size. Any larger may put a huge strain on your computer and if it is not powerful or fast enough, it may cause performance issues especially during your live stream. Under recording format, some people may suggest MP4 for this, but I strongly recommend using MKV. Why is this so? Let me explain it simply because for MKV format, it continues recording and saving constantly during your live stream. And this means that even if your computer crashes halfway during your live stream, all data or video recorded up to the point of crash is still intact. For MP4 format, this doesn't work, but the benefit of having MP4 is that the file size is generally smaller as compared to MKV. So whichever your choice, I would recommend MKV because you never know what happens during live streams, right? Next under audio settings, we only have to make sure that the desktop audio is set to default and leave everything as it is. For video settings, my recommended settings for base and output resolution are 1920 by 1080. So after we are done, click OK. So now we are back to the main interface. You can see there's a plus button here under sources and you can see a huge list of sources available for selection. For today's video, since we are just going to capture the zoom recording, we will use both the display capture and the audio input capture. Select display capture and click OK. Immediately, you can see this psychedelic screen thing on the capture screen that seems to be a never ending loop. Without trying to be too technical, it is simply actually a screen capture of a screen capture of a screen capture. 
and never ending. That is why you see this never ending sort of a window that gets smaller and smaller. But for now, don't get too mesmerized. Focus on the red box at the edge here. You will need to resize it so that you can see the full screen of your laptop in your recording setting. So how do you do this? You resize this red box by putting your mouse cursor on the top left and you can see that your cursor turns into this double arrow little icon here. Then resize the window accordingly such that you can see your entire laptop screen in this window and then you are good to go. Now we've got our display captured nicely in this box here. So next up is to ensure that we have audio as well because previously we are only capturing the display. So back to our main interface under sources, we can go to this plus icon here again and we add another source called the audio input capture. Click OK. Make sure you have it selected as default and click OK. You will see that now under audio mixer, it has changed to audio input capture. So now we have both the display capture and the audio input capture properly set up. Let's head over to our Zoom meeting. So as you can see for today, our simple example, we will just use source one, which is connected to our camera here and the USB-C port from the A10 mini pro or ISO connected to our laptop in which doing so it makes our A10 mini pro or ISO function as a webcam. I explained about this a little bit more in one of my previous videos. If you haven't checked it out, you can check it out here. Boot up the A10 Mini Pro and wait for the connection between your laptop and the A10 Mini Pro. Once connected, you can start up your Zoom meeting or enter any Zoom meeting as a participant. The default here that you should see should be the FaceTime HD camera, which refers to the built-in camera on my MacBook. But you can select your A10 Mini Pro here by choosing Black Magic Design. So go back to your OBS and under controls here, click on start recording. You will see the REC timer here start recording. So go back to your Zoom meeting, maximize the screen and enjoy your Zoom meeting. And once you are done with the meeting, go back to your OBS software and click stop recording. The file should be on your desktop if you set the recording path there. So there you have it. Using OBS to record your Zoom meetings while using the A10 Mini Pro or ISO as a webcam. For me, I personally feel that that is not the best solution as you are putting additional strain on your laptop or your PC and may possibly cause issues during your live streaming such as slowing your computer down because on one side, it is doing a constant recording and on the other side, it is trying to do live streaming. Potential issues that may occur may be your computer hanging up due to the memory of being used or your stream just lagging very slowly. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but until Blackmagic Design releases a new firmware or a new version of the A10 Mini Pro with a double USB-C port, I guess that is all we have to work with now if we can't use the USB-C port for recording when we are using the A10 Mini Pro as a webcam. Before I end this video, I would like to say it really means a lot to me if you found any of the information I shared today useful and if you can give this video a like. So it encourages me to continue making such videos for you. If you have any comments, do feel free to leave them below so I can work on my future video content to bring you something that you like. If you want to learn more about photography and videography on my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And of course, in the meantime, check out two of my other videos here. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.